is my very first jet engine, an SW120B intended for radio control jet aircraft. In the box is most of the equipment you need to run it. There's an electronic pump, a fuel filter and a valve. There's an ECU for power distribution and a terminal to change settings, test things and view live data. The system can be powered by a three cell LiPo and you can link up a standard RC receiver to the ECU for control. I wanted to share with you the experience of what it's like to get one of these engines and learn to run it. Oh, oh it smells, it smells of like kerosene and but first of all, I needed to build a sturdy engine mount. I started out with some aluminium profile that I cut down to size. After switching to a hacksaw with questionable results, I printed right angle brackets and some other hardware for assembling a sturdy frame. Next came some precision assembly. Because I want to see how much thrust the engine produces, I decided to build a sliding mount design, making use of linear bearings that glide along fixed rails. The engine can be bolted anywhere along the top of the extrusions, and everything is fully adjustable, which means I can use this rig to thrust test other engines and electric motors in the future. It's at this point I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters and remind them of my appreciation for helping me to acquire much of the equipment and hardware needed to make these videos. Funding makes this bird go up. I mounted the stand to a board and added an arm on the front to hold a digital scales. I took a lot of inspiration from Johnny Q90's thrust stand design here. I'll make sure to link his video in the description box. Now to prepare the engine. Setup of the electronics involves calibrating the onboard ECU. This is similar to setting up the throttle range on a standard electronic speed controller. The engine can use many different fuels, but I began by purchasing four liters of paraffin from a local petrol station for 11 pounds as a starting point. You have to use a special turbine oil with these engines, which is mixed into the fuel in a 20 to 1 ratio. I carefully mixed up about 500 milliliters of fuel and oil for the first running session, which, as you'll see, didn't last all that long. With everything in place, it was time for action. I screwed the engine mount to four sturdy pallets and set up the cameras. That's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> Who put this here? <laughs> I think it's probably a bit close. <laughs> Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. Dramatic reveal. Uh, if anything goes wrong, then we have got Fireman Sam here, just to help. Lock, locked and loaded. <laughs> the first run up was simply to bring the engine to idle at a modest 38,000 RPM.
should be going into cooling, so this should keep going. Uh, hopefully it keeps going, otherwise it's... Yeah, there we go. That was so loud! <laughs> that was so that loud! That scarier than any of the other projects you did. Just <laughs> the noise alone, it felt like it was about to explode. <laughs> How hot is that? Is it now cool now? It's like a hair dryer. Yeah. After that rather exhilarating run, it was now time to push the engine to full throttle and hopefully see how much thrust the engine produces at 125,000 revolutions per minute. So we discovered after the last test that we probably should have been wearing ear defenders. So we've got a solution here. High tech. <laughs> Well, I don't know. We've used quite a lot of fuel. Clearly this fuel tank's not, not really one you'd want to fly with, but uh, I stopped it just before it flamed out and now we're going into cool down mode, so. A little annoyingly, the scale used to measure the thrust was playing up a bit. So instead we devised another experiment to measure the temperature of the exhaust gases. Now we've done the first test, uh, or first couple of tests, we're going to now try and make a cup of tea by boiling the water uh, that we've got here in this mug. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we just thought it'd be a fun way just to demonstrate what, what sort of heat comes off the back of this. It's not boiling water already. Yep. Oh, there you go. Scientific. Scientific. <laughs> Right, before I show you the fourth and final test of the jet engine to see just how much thrust it actually makes with the scales working properly this time, um, it's time to thank this week's sponsor, Phantom Wallets, who made this video possible. Now, if you've been appreciating the level of precision and superb engineering of the jet engine in this video, you'll probably also appreciate the design of these wallets that have a chassis made from machined aluminium. Phantom very kindly sent me a couple of these to check out. You can customise and configure your own wallet design in a variety of finishes and sizes. So I chose some brown leather on this wallet. You can get other finishes though, such as real carbon fibre and real wood. So you can really customise your wallet to your own tastes. 
You can quickly and easily fan out your cards for easy access like this. And for me, these wallets are much sleeker and more compact than my previous wallet, reducing pocket bulge. Phantom have two lineups. They have the Phantom S and the Phantom R, which is this one here. Um, and they both come with a range of different accessories and customizable add-ons. This add-on kit comes with an Allen key to assemble and allows you to add an extra compartment for holding coins, SD cards, and other little bits and bobs that you might want to carry around on your person. So yes, consider checking out Phantom Wallets using the link down below. You can have a play around in their configurator and build a custom wallet and maybe use my promo code for 10% off. Um, yeah, there's a link down there. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already. I do a lot of pointing in these things. Now it's time to go back to the engine for some more full throttle testing. Since it had stopped snowing, I set up the engine outside to see if I could gather some better readings from the scales. I also hoped to get some cool footage of the combustion chamber by placing my main camera far behind the engine, zoomed right in. I hoped that it wouldn't melt, but it was quite far away. Clearly this is some piece of kit. I'm really pleased with how it performed. Um, it was an extremely exciting experience to run a jet engine like this for the first time. And yeah, I'm just really excited for what I'm going to be able to build with it. So that's a good question. What am I going to be building with this amazing turbojet engine um, that was, yes, a bit of an investment for the future videos on this channel. Um, well, the first thing that I'm considering is a jet car. Um, that's going to be maybe later on in the year because I've got some more uh, projects to be getting on with in the meantime. Um, one of them is the Bluebird boat, um, which is sat over there in pieces. I'm currently rebuilding that boat for some more tests, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely thinking about building a special jet boat as well, similar to Bluebird K7 or the Spirit of Australia, one of those kind of jet powered hydroplanes that set world water speed records. You might be thinking, why don't I build an aircraft with this? But I'm thinking that there are plenty of videos on YouTube of jet aircraft for the time being. So um, until I come up with a more original idea, I'm going to be building something a bit more interesting. Although I have just got this engine and it's ready to go and I'm very excited for all the things I'm going to be building with it. As mentioned, I have got these other projects to be finishing, such as the Bluebird boat. And of course, I've got the ejection seat project to be wrapping up as well. I'm currently hard at work with building an aeroplane for that to go in. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. If you want to make sure that you don't miss any of these projects, by the way, um, you can click the notification bell. I'm sure you know that already, but uh, it, it might be a good idea so you don't miss any of these monthly uploads. Um, 
just in case, you know, they go under the radar, so to speak. Um, but yes, thanks again for watching this. Um, and yeah, enough, enough waffling. I'll uh, get on with something. See you later.